Hi, welcome to another Terranify video. Today I'm going to show you how to paint ancient ruins in the sandstone theme. A complete list of materials is in the video description. So the first step is to assemble the ruins. I'm using the piece called Half Arch Door Wall A for this tutorial, but all the ruins assemble in a similar way. First, do a dry test fit to make sure all the pieces go together correctly. Next, apply some super glue to one half of the wall, then align the two halves together. Next, set it on top of the base piece. You can use a few drops of super glue accelerator if the glue is taking a while to set. Next, apply glue to the bottom of the wall, set it on top of the base, and align it. Again, use accelerator if necessary. Next, it's on to base coating. Wait a little bit after gluing to make sure the glue is dry so you don't ruin your paintbrush. For this theme, I'm going to be using a light brown or tan color for the base. Craft paint is normally pretty thick, so I'm going to thin it down with a little bit of water. Paint the entire model with this color. Make sure to rotate the model and look at it from every angle so that you don't miss any spots. There are lots of nooks and crannies on these pieces, so thinning the paint makes it easier to get into those areas. Craft paints are less pigment dense than miniature paints, and thinning them makes them even less so, so you may need more than one coat of paint to get complete coverage of the model. For this reason, and because the base coat color is fairly light, I recommend printing in white filament for this theme. A dark colored filament would require multiple coats of paint before it stops showing through. I didn't show it on camera, but I actually needed to do some touch up to a few spots on the model where the first coat of paint didn't fully cover it. Make sure that the base coat is fully dry before going on to the next step. You can stick the piece in front of a fan to speed up the drying process. Once the base coat is completely dry, you can now go on to the next step. Now we're going to highlight the model by dry brushing an off-white beige color. For this step, make sure that you're using a brush that's also completely dry. To dry brush, load your brush with a small amount of paint, then wipe off most of it onto a paper towel. What we're trying to do here is remove the liquid from the paint while retaining some of the pigment. Using a light dusting motion, apply the paint to the entire model. Again, paint it from different angles so that you don't miss any areas, but focus on getting it only on the raised surfaces and details. Don't try to work the paint deep into the recessed areas. Because there's a big difference between the base coat and highlight colors, you should see a fairly dramatic change pretty quickly. Once you've highlighted the entire model, we can go on to the next step. Once again, wait for the model to be completely dry, however, it shouldn't take long because the pigment heavy dry brush layer should dry very quickly. In this step, we're going to apply a wash to add some shading and create more color depth, and to tone down the sharpness of the highlight layer. There are many options for washes, but I really like using Army Painter's Strong Tone. However, feel free to experiment with any wash you want to try. I'm going to thin down the strong tone with water to create a roughly 50-50 mix. Next, liberally apply the wash to the model. I'm painting most of the model, but I'm not making a point to apply it to the entire surface. I'm also applying it more heavily in some areas than others. This variation in how the wash is applied will also create a subtle variation in color and depth. In general, try to work from the top down as you apply the wash, because it'll naturally run down and pool at the bottom of the model. If too much of it starts to pool, use your brush to wick it away and wipe it on a paper towel. The effect may look kind of splotchy at this point, but it'll look better once it's dry. When you're finished applying the wash, give it time to dry before going on to the next step. The final step is to add a little more color and texture to the model using tufts and foliage. I've got a few different colors of grass tufts, as well as some reindeer moss, or lichen. The tufts are various shades of yellow and golden brown, and the reindeer moss is a mid to dark brown. Having a few different shades of color that look good together will give the model a look that's more realistic and visually pleasing. To apply the tufts, simply remove them from the sheet using tweezers, add a drop of white glue, apply it to the model, and gently tamp it into place. For the reindeer moss, choose an area where you want to apply some, break off a small clump, 
and test it first before gluing. When you're satisfied, apply a generous amount of glue, then press the reindeer moss in place so that the glue gets absorbed and works its way through. The key to applying these materials is variety. Put a heavier mix of tufts and moss in some areas, and make it more sparse in others. In my mind, the sandstone theme represents a dry, barren area of land, so I want to limit the total amount of foliage that I apply, but I can still have a good variety. One thing to note is that for the sandstone theme, I keep the foliage limited to the base of the model. Once you're satisfied with how it looks, you just have to wait for the glue to dry, and the piece will be finished. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in getting physical copies of these ruins or STL files, links are in the video description. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell, and I'll see you next time.